you can't see me, have some dreams, I'm so tipsy, climb the top, you can't retreat. Welcome to my show, my name is Stephanie. I'm about to talk some shit, so come fuck with me. Come sit on my couch, I'm about to run my mouth about the shit I done seen. I'm not trying to be mean, but y'all be looking a mess. Welcome to my show, story time with Steph. Still on the mic, let me show you how I do it. I ain't a real rapper, but this bitch might pursue it because my rhymes are tight and my swag is oh so proper. But y'all don't need me in this game, gonna be screaming, we can't stop her. More than four seasons, still fucking up the game. We not in competition, bitch, I'm in my own lane. My spot is legit, I'm a motherfucking stain. Your man treats you like a side bitch because I'm his main. Gangsta Spice, Steph, Steffy T on repeat. Talking wild crazy, bitch, I keep on my receipts. Ain't shit and the shit at the same time. Speak my truth and go dumb in the same mind. Are you not entertained? I told y'all I was gonna bring y'all bars. And what did I do the first few seconds of this episode? I brought y'all bars. I never make a promise that I can't keep. That ain't me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to the final episode of season four, episode five. The title of this episode is 10 Years Later. My name is Stephanie. I am your fave's favorite shit-talking host, stand-up comedian, IT guru, SoundCloud rapper, and future lawyer bae. Did I say model? I meant to say model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can find me on Instagram at Gangsta Spice or at Storytime with Steph. I'm also on Twitter at Storytime W Steph. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and anywhere else you can listen to podcasts. Just Storytime with Steph. Before we get to the nitty gritty of this episode, I just want to take the time to say thank you. Thank you to everybody that tunes in. Shout out to the people that are reviewing my podcast, subscribing to my channel, liking, sharing. Shout out to y'all because without y'all, I would still be me, but like nobody would know who I was. So shout out to (laughs) y'all. 10 years later, and we are talking about high school. I thought to myself, maybe I should prepare for this episode and watch Mean Girls. High school was just like the Mean Girls movie, except most of us were black. Yeah, but I ain't got time. Well, I I got mad time, but like, I kind of wanted to drop this episode on the 10th because, you know, 10 years later, fourth season, 410. You see the symbolism? Columbia High School, 2005 to 2009. I barely remember who I thought I was back then, but trust, it was the beginning stages of that bitch. I just remember graduating, just being happy as fuck that I didn't have to go back. High school was low-key lit, like, at some points, but, like, not all the time because my parents, like, they had me on lockdown, so that's why I'm kind of cool with this whole quarantine because Haitian parents, they train you for this. Soldier Boy Tell. One of my boos from undergrad sent me my bio recently on some throwback Thursday shit. So let me read y'all the type of bitch I was back then. During her high school career, she was involved in a multitude of clubs and extracurricular activities. Some of them include mock trial, ACLU, columnists for the Velocity magazine. Yo, in high school, they gave me my own column. I've been talking shit for years, clearly. And the name of my column was Dear Stephanie. So, you know, like, motherfuckers without here asking for advice and I was giving it. I was giving good ass advice too. Good enough that it could be published in the school's magazine. So not only was I a columnist for the magazine, but I also was an editor. Moving right along, I played the violin. I was a peer counselor counselor and I was a part of the diversity council and moot court. Your girl was busy in high school. Spent mad hours in school and then when I wasn't spending hours in school I was at home. I had a comedy show like two weekends before the reunion so I was making jokes like you know just writing chuckle chuckle to myself and I wrote about my reunion like I was talking about work and then I was talking about the holidays and then I was saying like I'm so excited to be going back to Maplewood, New Jersey for Thanksgiving. You got your outfits ready for the living room pictures or not like you know on some shit like that and then I was just like I'm extra excited about this Thanksgiving because it's also my 10 year reunion. Woo! I know what y'all thinking. Yeah, bitch, you look 12. And then I was going to talk about back in the day, back in high school, these guys weren't checking for me. So I had a line like, back then you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. Security. (laughs) Now y'all motherfuckers can't even get next to me. Having full blown conversations in my DMs by your damn self like what and that's for all the guys that rejected me and then I also was talking about the girls I don't have it written down no more like I wrote it down somewhere but I can't find it but I was talking shit yeah Mm mm-hmm that's what I do best so that's what I was doing 
I said something, something along the lines like, I'm really excited to see all my old bullies. These bitches all peaked in high school, so I'm trying to see what 10 years after the peak looked like. I was just like, I hope all of them are able to find a babysitter because, you know, most of them are... So this is how I'm feeling in my mind. I got my ticket and so boom. It's Thanksgiving. Great day. Uh Uh-huh. It's the day of the reunion. Mad shit went down that day. I was just like, wow. Like, God, do you not even want me to go? Like, that was the last day I took an Uber. I remember that. I could tell you that. Three different Ubers couldn't find where the fuck my address was. Like, what? Wow. And then my mom was just like, oh, do you want me to take you? Like, nah, I'm good. Thanks. (laughs) I was like, what? Can you imagine? Like, I'm, I'm... 28 like (laughs) come on stop but three ubers i'm going in and out the house and my mom she's getting mad at me she was just like why don't you just let me take you and i'm just like mommy can you just relax like thank you but no so eventually these ubers got it together and me and my guy friend we got to the the reunion so i'm walking in there securing who i am and securing my outfit i'm like "Mm, yes team shut shit down i look the fuck good like ow my butt is round right i'm seeing familiar faces i'm hugging people i haven't seen in years people i only see on instagram people i only see on twitter or on facebook it feels good it's like oh wow I missed you guys. I mean, like, not, like, miss y'all, like, but, like, miss this, like, community. It felt like I knew these niggas and these niggas knew me. Like, it felt really good to have people be like, yo, I see you doing your thing. I see you with the comedy and shit, with the podcast. I'll be tuned in. I'd be like, thank you. Because I had my doubts. I was just like, does Maplewood fuck with me or not? Like, because I know I moved. It felt so good to hear that people been checking for me. It was a lot of, like, black excellence really you know and you know other races too but like there was mad black excellence like oh everybody looked the fuck good too i was surprised (laughs) no shade but you know like what are the odds let me stop talking shit the plan was to have conversations with anybody who was willing to have a conversation i rekindled some friendships You know, there was motherfuckers that I knew I wasn't going to talk to. And we respectfully didn't talk to each other. We didn't even give each other no side eyes. It was just like, oh, it's that bitch. Oh, hey, that bitch friend. It's cool because I know that you're tuned in. Shout out to the SoundCloud analytics. I expected certain people to come through because there were certain conversations that I felt that I wanted to have. But then when certain people didn't show up, I no longer felt the need to have those conversations. I even got the opportunity to have a discussion with the person that had the biggest beef with me. See how I word it? Had the biggest beef with me. What is it called when you got beef, but it's not your problem? Yeah. (laughs) So this girl used to bully me. Her friends used to bully me. Her friends used to get loud by the lockers. Aim for my face and fucking dodgeball. Try to get cute in the hall way like so here i am reapplying my lipstick because i'm getting cute for these pictures that we about to take in these photo booths and i look to my left and i see x and i'm just like oh shit bitch you remember all the shit you learned in kickboxing bitch are you even in the right stance i put my lipstick in my purse get my shit together because if it's gonna go down like my bag (laughs) my shit gonna be secured right i look to my left and she smiled on some hey how you doing I'm thinking, oh, she about to sneak attack like, bitch, <laughs> come on, like, what, what, what's that? Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm good, how are you? And then we chopped it up, talked about our lives and what we was ending up doing and what, you know, and then, you know, we ended up hugging at the end and I was just like, wow, that's black girl magic right there. Because she realized that the root of all evil was these niggas and <laughs> he wasn't even there probably out here aging like milk, realize that that nigga never mattered. And it's all about the sisterhood. (laughs) Okay. You know, there was no more beef. I mean, there was never beef for me, but she got the closure that she needed. That was growth. So much growth in that night, talking to old crushes, ex-boyfriends that, you know, ain't never really seen nothing. It was, it was a great sight to see. Like I got turned after the party was the after party and the after (sighs) party. I fell. (laughs) Yeah, but you know, it's cool. I tripped towards the end of the night, so it don't even matter. I was just like, damn, bitch. The final Gangsta Spice quote of season four is, things end, people change, and you know what? Life goes on. My mom loves saying that. 
life goes on. There are relationships that ended years ago that you want to rekindle, but that other person doesn't give a fuck. Guess what? Life goes on. He blocked your shot 10 years ago. Now this motherfucker talk about some double or nothing. No, this ain't love in basketball. Life goes on. He disappeared but popped back up on some I don't know why you ain't talking to me type shit. Like, life goes on. Y'all used to be besties, but now y'all don't even speak and you realize that life is way easier without her. Look at that. That's life going on. He blocked your shot. Now he got 10 kids. Like... <laughs> Look at God. Look at life going on. You heartbroken, but did you get paid? You, we focused on other things. Money. Yes, this is the last episode of this season, but this won't be the last time you're hearing from me. It looks like the Rona got me fucked up. It got you fucked up. It got the world fucked up. Just fucking up everybody's bag. <laughs> During this Corona season, I will be giving you Corona Chronicles. Yes, bitch. Yes. I can't thank y'all enough for tuning in to the final episode of season four. Here's some shit that didn't make the script. (laughs) We made it through this journey. I told y'all my shit was going to get more consistent since we trapped in the bedroom. Wait, we can't even use our Kelly reference. I didn't have a boyfriend most of my... Well, I mean, I had little boyfriends here and there, but, like, I was still a virgin, so it really didn't count until, you know, I fell for the love of my life at that time, and then I wasn't, and then, yeah, my parents, they were so disappointed when they found out that the cherry was gone. But before I fell in love with my high school sweetheart, I was sitting here falling for my hood nigga neighbor, like, girl, what are you doing? We chopping it up. We got mad shit in common, but for real, we don't. We just enjoy each other's company, like, it's, like, different. Yeah, everybody, everybody needs their little moment moments with a hood nigga like I feel like if you haven't had one like have you really lived you know here I am chopping it up learning about the streets and shit whole time motherfucker falling in love like oops my bad girl you could have him back when his ex stepped to me as a woman I was just like okay say less I'm not gonna talk to him no more. And then it was never a problem. Like, I understand the girl code. I'm not gonna step to anybody's man's whatever. If he like me and think I'm cute, thanks. Keep it moving, right? So that's what I did. Like, I don't really remember what happened, but I remember falling the fuck back. Then one too many of her little friends was getting cute, and I was just like, ah! Is that disrespect? And then when they didn't see me in school, they was out here on my Facebook, on my AIM, just talking mad shit. All right, y'all motherfuckers, that's real disrespectful, especially because I fell back. Like, wow, you don't believe a bitch? Oh, he's still talking about me? He's talking about me, but I'm not talking to him. But since y'all want to get cute, I could get cute too. Disrespect will be followed with disrespect. I remember coming home from school one evening, getting on Facebook, typing away, talking shit to all my little friends, right? Then I get a little message from ex's bestie on some, I'm gonna beat your ass, bitch, (laughs) type shit. I was just like, wow, this ain't even your battle, like... But since I'm going to be going to college, like, my disrespect has to be a little different because, like, I can't get into any fights and be suspended. So, you know, all those I'ma beat your ass messages, also known as cyber threats, I printed them out. Mm -hmm. Took them to school with me and gave it to the guidance counselor on some. Yeah, um, she wants to beat my ass. Like, I'm not sure how I should respond. I'm not sure what anybody did, but (laughs) ain't nobody tried to beat my ass after that. Never making a promise that I can't keep, okay? (laughs) Unfortunately for y'all niggas. Ooh, this ain't even an episode about y'all niggas. Mm-hmm. All the guys that thought I was ugly because at one point someone told me that I was permanently ugly. Yeah. But look at his girl now. Like, (laughs) come on. (laughs) Here I am aging like wine and y'all are aging like milk. Like, oh. Someone was just like, yeah, shout out to the 10 year reunion. See y'all all all in the 20 year. And I'm thinking in my head, who the fuck is going to a 20 year reunion? Welcome to my show, Storytime.